you continue with the work that you want to do to try and find out the truth about Lance Armstrong, or at least portray that to the general public and, and for people to, to realise who he is. He goes on to win seven Tours de France, uh, he retires, he makes a comeback, he becomes so powerful and so big. There must have been a point where you started to think, is, you know, is this person too big, too powerful, with too much money to ever be toppled almost? Yes, I, I have to say I always felt he was too big to be toppled. If you said to me, did you see the end coming as it came? No, I didn't. I absolutely didn't. Because in 2001, I found out that he was working with Michele Ferrari, doping doctor. Should that have not made a big difference? It should. Did it? No. Lance said, I believe Michele is an honest man. And a lot of the journalists said, well, that's OK then. Lance believes he's honest. Well, we, they wrote, Lance believes he's honest. What David Wells said is interesting, but not that relevant. So I come up with Emma O'Reilly. I was, and she says, I was Lance's masseuse. There was doping in the team. And I put that in a book with Pierre Ballester, and people say, you know what? Uh, Emma O'Reilly is just one witness, maybe a bitter ex-employee. Ex and then I go to Betsy Andreo. She heard him admit using doping. Oh, she's a bitter wife of a teammate. And Lance had a way of diminishing all the people who spoke against him. And I suppose the bit that really frustrated me was the readiness of so many to accept Armstrong's totally implausible explanations, to accept the fact that he felt he could carry to assassinate anybody who spoke against him. And I found that depressing. It was like, if you were a big guy, you could say whatever you like about other people, and the journalists who should have been challenging you didn't challenge you and were prepared to let you get away with it. 13 years, obviously, is a long time to pursue one person almost, or one subject. Do you feel like it's closed now for you? Yeah, I think it is pretty much closed. And, um, and people, you know, because I was on this case for a long time, I feel I've got exaggerated credit for it, really. I mean, if you want to know how Lance Armstrong was brought down, you need to look at Lance Armstrong, not David Welsh. Because although Lance was a smart guy, I think his smartness was more the analytical type of intelligence. I don't think he was emotionally intelligent. He didn't realise that Floyd Landis would constitute a very dangerous enemy. So when Floyd Landis got banned after the 2006 Tour de France and came back and is, looking, is reaching out to Lance for some help, and Lance says basically, get lost, you're a loser, you're caught. Lance made an enemy of a guy who was incredibly dangerous because Floyd is tough, he's hard, and when he takes his gloves off, he's a, he's a formidable fighter. So Floyd took the gloves off wrote about what life was like in the US postal team. And because maybe people like me had created a lot of doubt about Lance Armstrong, then you had people like Travis Tigard, the United States Anti-Doping Agency CEO. You had people like Jeff Nowitzki, who was conducting an investigation <coughs> into doping and cycling. They were listening to Floyd, because in a way, maybe what I had done had, had created enough doubt for Floyd's allegations to have a huge amount of credibility. But Floyd's allegations were the turning point in this story. And from that moment on, we had entered the end game, and it was going to end very good for the truth and very badly for Lance Armstrong. Do you think that had he not come out of retirement uh, back in 2009, that you know, we might not be sat here talking about the same subject because things might not have come out? Totally. If he hadn't, re if he hadn't made, his, made his comeback in 2009, there is no way in the world that he would have uh, been caught in my eyes. Um, but it's like, you know, we've all watched the Hollywood movies, right? The guy has been the greatest bank thief in the history of robbing banks. And he's accumulated a lot of money. And he goes into retirement and he's living a nice, sedate life. And somebody comes along and says, you know, there's one last job that you should consider doing. And for Lance Armstrong, coming back in 2009 was that one last job. Couldn't resist it. I believe he did it for the money that I think he felt he needed some extra money before finally going into retirement. But he was lured by that one last job, one last adventure. And it's, it's you know, the, the history of Hollywood is littered with movies that have bored us and with guys coming out of retirement for one last job. And Lance was just, you know, another of that genre. For more videos like this, go to youtube.com forward slash GCN.